Hi guys, welcome to World Games and Cocktails. I'm Pat Bombay, and today I'm going to show you the Taurus Venator. This is a vintage model, an old Forge World model. I don't know if they still have it available or not, chances are no. But I found this looking into an old box with all my relics after 20 or so years of collecting stuff. And I thought it would be interesting to take it out and see what's on it. Also, I found information in this book here. Imperial Armor, Volume 8, Rhydon Castoral Novel. All the information I got is from this book, uh, the description and the rules. I assume at this point, if the rules are still available for the 9th edition, probably they have changed. But still, I'm going to use this as reference. So, let's see what we got here. Well, this is the Imperial Armor Volume 8. This is a very rare book, actually. And printed on 2010 by Forge World. And what we're going to do is Taurus Rapid Assault Vehicle 82. Okay, this is what I'm looking for. As you can see, we have a little reference, some story on it, um, the blueprints or schematics, and this is what I'm looking for. So this is what I'm looking for, Taurus Venator Squadron, 50 points per Taurus Venator, uh, Ballistic Skill 3, Front Armor 11, Side 10 and Rear 10. It came with Two twin linked multi lasers, you can change those for twin linked last cannons. You can add two hunter killer missiles, so it's a fantastic anti vehicle weapon. And also, all terrain vehicle, fast attack, galvanic motors, which gives you if a Taurus suffered and mobilized results on the vehicle damage chart, it may ignore the D6 wall of 4 plus. That's pretty cool. And this is what we're going to do today. Now, the thing is, the Imperial Armor instructions are not actual instructions, right? It's a picture of the finished design plus a list of parts. And pretty much that's it. It's actually kind of simple, but let's see what happens. Let's take a look at this, this last cannon here. It's all twisted, it's bended to, to one side, it's actually bending downward. Now the issue is how do you make it straight again, right? Well, with resin it's actually quite easy. I only need to put it in really hot water for a few minutes. I mean, 30 seconds or so. To make it flexible again, take it out, straight it, and then hold it for a few seconds until it's cool enough to to regain the way it should be. So I'm going to get some hot water and I'll be back in a moment. Okay, so take a look at this. This is really, really hot water. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to insert the bended last cannon here for let's say, 30, maybe 40 seconds. Now it's flexible. And I'm going to turn it as straight as possible. And as soon as it recovers its normal temperature, room temperature, it will solidify again and 
via straight last cannon. Okay, can you see the difference? Okay, this is our first layer drying. I think it was a good code. So while this dries, well, time for cocktails. Let's see you downstairs. Go. Today I will show you how to make the gin sunrise, which is very easy to make and it's also a beautiful drink. We are going to need one cone of glass, and we are going to top the ice. We are going to have curry meal upon the supper. Some orange juice. Now we are going to get more stir. Combine the flavor profile. And finally, we are going to use one tablespoon of gravity, which we are going to pour by pressing the spoon against the glass like this and let it like the side of the glass And here we go. This is our gin sunrise. Enjoy. I'm going to use this uh, the Army Painter Wolf Grey. It's a great color. Most brands have the same color, different names. I think in Citadel is or was a space wolf gray. And I'm going to dilute it with a little bit of rubbing alcohol. Oops. It's better than diluted in water for these kind of things. Now, if you are into wear brushing, there are several different brands that make a special paints for that, for that uh, feature so probably you want to well, uh, to go that way right but if not this will work perfectly fine now i'm going to try to make some spots with a lighter color and then a lighter color so for that we are going to try to make a very thin lines and spots on it so you have to have a little bit control with do not open it too much like this that going all the way back because then going to you're going to spray all over it you have to go with tiny little bursts like this this is a very older brush i don't know uh, if technologies have changed probably they have but um, for this purpose, this will do just fine. Okay, finally I'm going to use Snow Shadow from Reaper Mini. So I'm transitioning from the Wolf Grey to the Snow Shadow. I'm going to put a link below for you to look them if you're interested.
I'm going to use the Army Painter matte black. Of course, the tires. Uh, what I'm going to do? Let's. Uh, well, clearly the tires. These batteries seem to be. Uh, these capacitors. I'm waiting for my black color on my Toros to dry it. It's taken longer than expected. So meanwhile, let's go to paint the crew. Now for this, I'm going to use tanned skin. Then I'm going to do a wash with fresh wash, and then. Fair shadow and then fair skin. All these Rupert Mini, and you know, I'll put the link, link below. Okay, this is the result after using the first shadow and I was going to use fair skin but I think it, it will contrast too much and I think it looks good enough now. Keep it in mind that these are going to be tabletop miniatures, this model is going to be fighting battles so, so yeah, I, I think this is where I'm going to stop on the skin. Okay. I'm going back to the wolf grey to do the uniform and the highlights on the armor and I'm going to use now the leather brown to paint the seat belt and these patches and the gloves. Okay, next step. I'm going to apply a bit of this. What's the name of this? Wolf gray, mixed with white, to go on the pledges of the of the fabric of his uniform. <clears throat> and then I decided I'm going to apply a wash on the on the leathery stuff. And uh, we'll do the helmet, the visor, and we'll be done with the guys. <laughs> the one thing I just wanted to show you is in the visor, uh, probably you have seen this already, but anyways, I use this... Uh, Brion Blue from uh, Reaper Mini and to put a light on it what I'm going to do what I did is that same color I apply a little bit of white to make it lighter and on one corner right or left doesn't matter you apply a little bit of that lighter color, okay? So the corner we used on that same one, but in an even smaller spot. We're going to apply 
our lighter blue and finally one single dot of white on the opposite corner that creates a little bit the effect of dot of light reflecting on the, on the visor or helmet whatever you're doing okay that the way I see it our crew is ready uh, now we'll continue painting this guy So I'm going to use this Vallejo uh, light yellow ochre, a little bit of that, not too much, and this is ash grey, also Vallejo. I'm going to mix those two, and maybe I can get something good out of it. Let's see, it will go kind of a paste, that's what you want, not too liquid, not too liquid just a paste. And we're going to put this on the tires. If you were planning not to touch it and leave it on a display or something, it's fine. But if you're going to use it on a tabletop game and keep moving in and touching, all this pigment eventually will fall down. So the way to seal it is with a little bit of bad varnish uh, mat. And we're going to dilute a little bit of that on alcohol and add it to it. That way it will seal it on surface and it will last forever. Now I want to add some snow because it goes in our snowy battlefield. So for that, and we have seen this before, same technique. After all this work, the Venator is finally ready. Now I'm going to put it on the tabletop to see how it looks like. Um, I hope you like it. I hope you have enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Also, I'm going to add links below of the materials I use for this episode. And see you next time on War Games and Cocktails. Bye bye!